Peace and blessings, Israel. May the Most High, in the name of Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, bless you all. My name is Brother Aram, and Lord willing, today we'll be going over a topic found in the book of Revelation called The Spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? There's a passage in there that describes the world having the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. So let's start with a prayer, and then we'll get right on into it. So Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yahweh Shai, the Savior, bless us in all things. Help us. Guide us with thy truth through your Holy Spirit. And according to your mercies, forgive us our sins that we may be saved. O oh, praises to the Heavenly Father in the name of Christ who have not forgotten us. Let your word be received in our hearts forever and ever. Thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, Israel. So at this point, let's head to Revelation 11 and 8. Revelation 11 and 8. So we're in the book of Revelation, 11th chapter, about the 8th verse, all praises, and you'll see where we got the topic from, right in this verse, all praises. So Revelation 11 and 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. See, that's today's topic. The Bible prophesies of a great city, meaning this society, this entire society, in these last days which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. And the reason why it's spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, because the same negative spirits in Sodom and the same negative spirits in Egypt are the same negative spirits combined in this society, which they call America or the European dominance or what they call the West. They got so many terms of how they describe in their uh, rulership. But we know, according to prophecy, in the last days, it speaks of a great city, right? This entire environment, right? And this great city has other names. It's also called the great city of Babylon, right? It's also called the whore that sat upon many waters, Right? So there's many names, but this one is pretty detailed here as it goes into a context. This society here ran by the so-called European has a spiritual nature, an underlayment, an infrastructure of the things notable or infamous in Sodom and the things notable and infamous of Egypt. Okay, as a, as a matter of fact, Egypt is a Greek-imposed word which describes bondage, right? So the things of Sodom and the things of Egypt are notable in this great environment called America or the UK, right? Or the Western world, right? And they dominate society. And if you don't go along with their program or you don't go along with their philosophies or their agenda, they block out governments. They set embargoes. They keep the money from them so they can't get loans to, to build up infrastructure and build up their countries to stay modern with the rest of the countries. Right? And they control the commerce. 
They shut down the oceans. They shut down the air, airspace. They do heavy levies and tax against governments that will not comply to their form of life, their way of life, their culture, a sodomite culture and a culture involving captivity where everybody has to go through them or else. Right? All right, so let's get into the, each one of these. But before we do that, let's finish the verse. So it says, in their dead bodies, the dead bodies is talking about the nation of Israel. Right? Shall lie in the street of the great city. So it's just talking symbolism here. Okay, because we in that dead estate. And the Lord would have to revive us through the Christ. And the outpouring of his Holy Spirit. Right? So we would be in the midst of this society. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Where also, here's another clue. Our Lord was crucified. Now we know the Lord being crucified in a literal sense was at the hand of the Romans way back when in the land of Israel, right? In the outskirts of Jerusalem, they call Calvary or Golgotha, the place of the skull. See? But now. We know the Lord wasn't crucified in Sodom or Egypt. So then how did they crucify the Lord spiritually in that sense in this great city? Well, they killed his name and they killed what he stand for. And they came up with a whole different type of Christ. That's how they killed the Christ in a spiritual sense. They got you, they got the world. See, they went, they transitioned from the Greco-Roman empire then they fell off during the medieval times and they came back as the Holy Roman Empire and usurped the world and got back into power through a religious means. The Holy Roman Empire through that Catholicism and through that Catholicism it worked hand in hand and enslaving people. And why Egypt is part of this prophecy is Egypt was known to keep the Hebrews in captivity and slavery for 400 years. Right? And with this Holy Roman Empire and their Catholicism, they came up with doctrines that were contrary to the true Christ of the Bible. Right? Things like the, the way Christ looked. Things like the what Christ taught. Right? They tell you lies that Christ came and give us grace only. <laughs> that somehow Christ did away with the law, right? Because they refer, they're referencing their Christ, which is truly Satan, an imposter named Satan and Lucifer, whom they deem as some light bearer. He's showing them the light. He's showing them darkness. And so the leaders of this society, according to prophecy, this is what they're about. They're a bunch of sodomites and they're a bunch of uh, wicked men and women too that do not believe that men should be free. They believe in a captive, slave, caste system. And any government that's got independence, they only gain independence if the so-called European recognizes their government as an independent government. And that's got strings attached, right? That's got strings attached because these governments have to be governed through a so-called European Caucasian type manner or else. They're not allowed to be their own government and, and follow their own customs. And for them to be successful in this great city, they got to follow behind the so-called European. Okay, according to the Bible, we keep saying so-called, but according to the Bible, all men come from a nation. And the so-called European, he come from a nation called Esau, the children of Edom. And they got different families of that one nation, the Edomites. Just like you got different families, 12 tribes of that one nation, the Israelites. That's us. All right. 
And so let's try to hit on all three points, Sodom, Egypt, and how they crucified the Lord, right? Since we're in Revelation, let's go right after that, how they crucified the Lord. Let's get right into that. Revelation 1 and 10. Revelation, the first chapter and the 10th verse. He said, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. So they exiled John. Okay. The Romans was on a campaign to try to crush the true Christianity of the true Christ. Right? And so they were throwing, they were killing the church, killing the believers of the Christ, putting them in the arenas, feeding them the lions, right? Putting them in the arenas of, to gladiator bait, right? And made martyrs out of them. In this case, John wasn't killed, he was exiled on the island of Patmos, which is in the Mediterranean. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, meaning the Sabbath day, and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. That's talking about Christ. And what thou seest, write in a book. The book is called Revelation. So this is what, why in this introduction of the first chapter in Revelation, John going through the whole purpose of why he wrote the book. Because the Alpha and Omega tell them, I'm going to show, I'm going to reveal things to you. You're going to see things. I'm going to reveal them to you. And you're to write it in the book called Revelation because it was revealed to you. You saw it. And now you got to write it. Notice he didn't say draw it, make pictures and images. Right? So he had to write what he saw, including his encounter with the Alpha and Omega. He wasn't told to draw it like a lot of groups ignorantly and uh, mischievously get into that idolatry by trying to draw the image of the Christ. Now you, now you done messed up. Because when he showed up to John, not you or your elder, but John, the instructions was clear. You What you see, you to write. How you spell write? W-R-I-T-E. Ain't never said draw or chore depiction and all this semantics. And so the book is Revelation. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. So these were seven synagogues where the believers of the Christ out of the children of Israel would gather. And Christ wanted these letters written unto them, this book of Revelation, a copy to go to all seven of the churches. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. So we say one like unto the Son of Man. John should know because John would know how Christ looked. He was one of the original 12 disciples. So he turns and looks because he heard him first before he saw him. And he said, look like the Christ. Right? Clothed with a garment, right? If we turn the page here. Clothed with a garment down to the foot. So he had a Middle Eastern type garment like the Hebrews wore. And girt about the paps with a golden girdle. He had a big uh, gold belt around his paps, his waist. Now it's going to get into his physical description. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So he had a full set of woolly hair. And you look, it's look fully gray. That's what it means. Fully gray. Not that salt and pepper, but fully gray. As white as snow. But look, look what stands out. He said woolly. Right? That's describing a so-called Negro right there. That's not describing a European that they can't, they, the Catholics came with through that so-called uh, Holy Roman Empire, right? So it says, as white as snow, pure white, right? And his eyes were as a flame of fire, I mean, he had a striking appearance. And his feet 
Now I get into the color of his skin, like unto fine brass. So right there, it starts off as a brown colored man. Brass is a derivative of brown. But it didn't stop there. It says as if they burned in a furnace. So we got two big clues here. Woolly hair and brown skin. Dark at that, because if you burn anything, does it turn white or does it turn black? If you burn paper, if you burn wood, <laughs> you're going, you're getting darker. And his voice as the sound of many waters. So when we talked about how they crucified the, our Lord, they lied on how he looked and they lied on what his message was. Let's head to Matthew five, seventeen. They lied on how he looked, and they lied on his message, right? It's called character assassination. They just gave you a whole new Christ, right, on purpose, because this is part of that spirit that they under, Satan the devil. That's what they under. It's not a mistake, right? And so that image was pushed throughout the world for white supremacy. It wasn't pushed for love. How is it love when the scriptures tell you one who lies is in the spirit of hate? That's what tell you in the book of Proverbs. So the minute they're lying, how is that love? How is that color doesn't matter? You're saying truth doesn't matter. That's what you're saying. See, So a lot of our people, we have to learn that what they taught us in these religions is completely different from the actual Bible. All right. So when you head to Matthew 5, 17, we went to the description of the Christ. They didn't kill that. Now they got them floating around the earth. Instead of a dark-skinned man with woolly hair, which, according to the scriptures, is knowledgeable because we read it. Right? We read it. And it tells us. All the words of the Christ came from that brother that we read about. That's You're hearing his words from a dark-skinned man with woolly hair out of the tribe of Judah, because it's 12 tribes. So every time our people pick up the Bible and think it's that blonde hair, blue-eyed lie, you're under the spell. Right? We've been tricked. Because that, that they say a picture's worth a thousand words. Yeah, so you've been taught to hate yourself and love the enemy. That's what that's about. And anything the enemy do is godly and righteous and Christ-like. He can bomb nations. He can rape, rob, murder you. He can withhold reparations. He can do all kinds of stuff, put poison in your veins with his needles, and you'll still talk about Jesus' love and God bless America. See, so we... We got to understand that, that that infiltration, there's a spirit behind these idols. And we can't be so-called, we can't be a Christian and we are about lies. You're not a Christian. Okay, Christian is about Christ. Christ said, I am the way, the lie. No, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So those that are of Christ got to be about truth, Israel. All right, so Matthew 5, 17. So, they done lied on the image of, of, of or his depiction. And they've been lying for a few centuries now. And according to prophecy, we're not surprised. Okay, so Matthew 5. And when you go to 17 verse, right, we have Matthew 5. 17, he said, think not that I am come to destroy the law. See what Christ said? He never came to get rid of the Ten Commandments, the dietary law, the Sabbath, the laws on how men and women conduct themselves. He ain't came to get rid of that. So he said, think not that I'm come to destroy them, the law or the prophets. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. So he come to keep the law and to fulfill prophecy. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot, meaning one stroke of the pen, or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so. So the teaching is two ways. Verbal and actual uh, actions. 
right? Where one could be a bad example in breaking the commandments, you're teaching others to break the commandments. And that's what this society is about. They verbally instruct and brainwash the people to break commandments, and they lead by example, a bad example at that, on how to break the commandments of God and Christ. But why did we go here? Because they crucified the Christ in a spiritual sense by lying on what he looked like and lying on his message. He telling you straight, he's about the commandments of the Father. So any one of our people that think they can break the least of the commandments, and you teaching men so. You to be called the least in the kingdom of heaven means you ain't going to be there. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So this is in the New Testament. And he's describing the new covenant. That even in the new covenant, we to do and keep the commandments of the Father through Christ. You see? For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Now, what was the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees? It wasn't truly righteous. Christ was being uh, sarcastic to say, these guys were hypocrites. When you read in Matthew 23, he said, these men say and do not. They were doctors of the law. They claimed to be teachers of the scriptures. But they had a false sense of righteousness. So amongst the Christian, the disciple of the Christ, your righteousness had to exceed the hypocrites. Because if it didn't, he said, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. So now you see how that phony Christianity coming out of that Roman Catholic Church and then all those denominations that broke off and established themselves uh, decades later and centuries later, they all a bunch of false righteousness. See? You see what Christ teaching? We can't be hypocrites. And the righteousness involved what? Doing and teaching the commandments. And now you're great in the kingdom of heaven. You see? So yes, we're under grace. That covers for sin. But that don't mean continuing sin. We got to do and teach them that righteousness. Meaning we got to be about the same commandments Christ was about. So that's far removed from what they teach us in these religions. The way they teach you, you could break commandments, you can pick and choose what you're going to follow in the Bible. Matter of fact, you ain't got to follow the Bible. They don't even bring the Bible to church no more. You could sing and dance and eat pork chops, break the dietary law. And then Christ show up and give you cotton candy, take you, you know, hold you by the hand, take you to the Ferris wheel, right? That's the lie they tell you. But when you actually read the scriptures upon further review, he's coming back for, with fiery judgment for those who did not believe the gospel and understand what the good news represented. It represented repentance so that we can be saved, Israel. Repent from what? Our sins. There's no doctrine of Christ on this earth where you part of Christ and you can keep sinning and break the law of God. So did they crucify our Lord in this great city? Yeah, for starters. How he looked and what he represented. <laughs> you go teach a whole class on that one part. Right? So let's go back to Revelation 11 and 8. Be back in Revelation 11. Right? And let's read that 8 verse again. And their dead bodies, right? It's talking about the children of Israel shall lie in the street of the great cities, talking about this European society, the children of Esau, right? And there's a spiritual foundation that they're going by, which spiritually is called Sodom. They're a bunch of Sodomites. And Egypt, they're a bunch of witches and warlocks who enslave people. Where also our Lord was crucified, they killed the Christ, Literally, years ago under the hands of the Romans. But here in this sense, they spiritually tried to kill the Christ by what he looked, how he looked, and how what he stood for. You see that, Israel? Mm-hmm. And so we're going to get into the Sodom part and the Egypt part. Okay, let's go after the Egypt part. 
Let's go after the Egypt part. Let's go to Revelation. And I want to say Revelation 13. Right? We're in Revelation 13. And John describes the kingdom of the so called European, and it's in a uh, prophetic sense, right? But we're going after one of the characteristics of this man's kingdom, okay? Revelation 13 and 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. I mean, we all got ears, but we all don't understand. So for those that's meant to understand these prophecies, let them understand. He that leadeth into captivity. Now, this he is not amb ambiguous or like open-ended. Okay, for the first nine verses of this chapter, he's been talking about this kingdom rising up out the sea in the last days, right? So it's talking about this Greco-Roman Empire. They were the last group to rule, and they've been ruling ever since. The only difference is they've been going under aliases. They've kept the ways of Rome right in front of your face with their structures and their court systems, their government systems, judicial systems, the structures of their building, the Masonic Egyptian style um, arrangement of D Washington, D.C., the city of London, not London, but the city of London, just like not Washington State here in America, but Washington, D.C., the District of Columbia. These are all city states who are miniature governments within the government. And then you got the Vatican, that third city state. And they all about Egyptian esoteric Satanism. The term Magi, those are your Egyptians, right? They get the word magicians. That's talking about the Egyptian sorcerer, right? And that's not by coincidence they call the basketball team here in the United States the Washington Wizards. Because their whole setup is based off of witchcraft and sorcery, trying to gain some sort of advantage through prognostication and enchantment, see, and astrology and wickedness. They got powerful satellites watching the heavens, looking in the skies, and and going by different signs in the in the in constellation. They all about that wickedness. And that's how they know how to run you and run society and take and keep moving. They got a bunch of moving parts. And then so we got to depopulate. Okay, do world wars, do civil wars, do conflicts in the earth. Oh, that ain't good enough? Okay, do sex trafficking and drug trafficking. Oh, that's the people still can't depopulate fast enough? Okay, do vaccines. <laughs> right? which I meant to say something different because of the algorithms, you know how they do, but you put that poison in your vein, that snake bite, and they've been steadily depopulating God's creation because they're about that devil, you see, destroying the human family, right? Okay, but mainly the people of Israel, God's people. So for the first nine verses, he talking about this so-called European, this Edomite, Greco-Roman Edomite. So when we get to that ninth verse, let's read it again. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So what would this man's rulership be about? He's the captor and we the slaves. We the captives. So the Lord said at the end of this thing when he sent Christ... This society that believes in a captive society... You have to understand, they are fully trained in saying one thing, but doing another because they enter that sleight of hand, that misdirection. They're magicians, meaning sorcerers. And they have secret meetings and councils and say, listen, we're going to pose to the world that we're the good guys. We're philanthropists. We're this, we're that. 
when really we're going to use our stolen money from slavery and every other thing to put, bring forth our will and our desire, satanic desire, under the instructions of Satan to put the world in captivity, especially God's people, the children of Israel. So this society is not a society of freedom and liberty. They, they tell you that to keep you docile. But they fully geared on, look, just look at the history. Everywhere they went, they put the, the original people in captivity. Ain't a place they ain't conquered or took over where the people ain't, or, or how should we say, the people are free. So he that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword, that's that colonization. That's that exploring. That's that discovery. Right? All these words without, you see, they use that witchcraft of words to put you to sleep. Oh, it ain't really. See, Columbus wasn't really a killer. See, Columbus Day represents uh, new horizons. Yeah, for who? <laughs> so they was killing people and putting them in captivity. So they say, he that killer with the sword may be killed with the sword. That's what it said, maybe. Nah, it's an absolute right here. Must be killed with the sword. So they're going into captivity. That's the future for, for the remnant of those that is that uh, Christ doesn't kill <laughs> at his second coming. That's the future for the so-called European. Not because we choose to say these things, but the prophecy was already in place before we were born. The minute the guy rose up in the earth and thought he can do these things, he played right into the prophecy. So he that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So that shows you a distinction between the saints and him. So how he the saints? <laughs> I'm telling you. So the Bible is an Israelite book. They've been lying the whole way. This man was never a saint, never the angels, never Christ, never the Most High, never Peter, James, and John. He's that devil that the Bible speaks of that was purposed to rule in the end times. You see, there was a nation to rule to represent Satan in the, in the world. And then there's a nation to rule after them to represent the most high in the world. That's the children of Israel. You see, so they represent the physical counterpart of the spiritual entity, Satan. And we represent the physical counterpart, or we should represent the physical counterpart of the spiritual entity, the Most High, through his Christ, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So you see, they about that captivity, Israel. That's why they got everything under control. They control the food. They control the economics. They control the airspace. They control water. You know, you can go to jail by trying to collect water <laughs> in a barrel. The water come free from the sky. You collect water from the barrel, you go to jail. The man is out of his mind. <laughs> he tell you he, he can have a gun, but you can't have a gun. <laughs> you okay, you believe that? You got people, yeah, I'm against guns. Yeah, all right. And the same people talking about they're against guns, right? These these, these so-called politicians who's trying to do away with the Second Amendment rights of uh uh, bearing arms here in the United States. That's part of their, their constitution. Notice I said part of their thing. Our thing is this Bible. You understand? So their thing, they go against their own laws. And you got these lying politicians. Oh, we against the guns. It's too much violence. But they walk around with security. <laughs> and they security carrying bubble gum wrappers. No, they carrying guns, right? <laughs> I'm telling you, man. Only a witch can have the audacity to tell you stuff and be the stuff they telling you not to do, they do it right in front of you. That's a witch. And the people be in awe. They be confused. Yeah, you know, uh, we got to go fight for America over because we got to fight our enemies' enemies. Right? That's how they done brainwashed us. We got to fight the Vietnamese. We got to fight the Germans. 
We got to fight the Iraqis. We got to fight. He tell you whoever and whenever, and then all of a sudden, yeah, they are enemies. No, they his enemies. <laughs> so it's okay for to have you to fight for him against his enemies, but it ain't okay for you, right? It's somehow ungodly for you to fight your enemy, <laughs> your mortal enemy. We done had you in this country jamming you up to this present day. But see, through his lying Christianity, that's why they keep you asleep. Now, what's the Sodom part? Oh, wait on, we got one more on this, this about this captivity now. Okay, they, got, they done generated generational wealth off of putting the Israelites in captivity, just like Egypt, where he said, come, let us deal wisely with those Hebrews. And that new king rose up in Egypt and disregarded the advancements Egypt got through uh, a Hebrew named Joseph, right? Joseph was second to the king, man, and showed them how to how to uh, become a great kingdom during his tenure. A new king rose up years later, said, man, we don't care about Joseph. We don't care about the Hebrews. We're going to use these bums, right? And that's how they saw us. And they put us in hard bondage and slavery, right? So then how would the so-called European become Egypt? Well, we already read a scripture, but let's get a let's get a a, a more uh how should we say relatable one. Deuteronomy twenty eight, right? Deuteronomy the twenty eighth chapter. And we'll read from the sixty fourth verse to the sixty eighth verse, right? Deuteronomy twenty eight, sixty four to sixty eight. Now this is a this whole chapter, right? When you read that 15th verse, we're going to read the whole chapter, but I just want to point it out. Some, this might be a scripture some people never seen before. But he, Moses speaks of the blessings and the curses. Right? This was prophetic. So he speaks of the blessings and the curses. Israel keep the commandments of God, you get blessed. Israel break the commandments of God, you get cursed. So, if, and, and we know the history. The, the, we as a people went astray from the Lord. So them curses kicked in. So when you read that 15th verse, briefly, Deuteronomy 28, 15, he said, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee, Israel, and overtake thee. See what Moses warned our forefathers? And this prophecy been going on ever since. And to tell you, it's an ongoing, it's a pending type prophecy. Right? And so when we get skip down to 64, Deuteronomy 28, 64, and the Lord, as a curse, shall scatter thee among all people. So that tells us we would lose our land. The real Israelites ain't in the land because the Lord scattered the real Israelites, right, among all nations. So to do that, captivity. From the one end of the earth even unto the other, and there, say, here's a curse, thou shalt serve other gods. Not only you lost your homeland and got put in captivity, you lose your mind. You lose sense and memory of who you are and who your God is. And we end up following the gods of our enemies. This is why our people be walking around with some, I don't know who this guy is supposed to be, some anorexic uh, homeless guy that's, that's on a cross. Who's that guy? That's not the Christ of the Scriptures. But he's an anorexic, homeless uh, <laughs> European guy. Look like Charles Manson. And they wear it on a necklace. Tell I got the crucifix. No, brother, you, 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 you got tricked. So we've been serving other gods under this curse, which neither thou nor thy father, see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they would never bow down to some false Christ, some European pretend to be the Christ. Right? So 
nor thy fathers have known even wood and stone. So you see these idols are made out of wood and stone, like paper come from wood, and you got stone statues and everything, right? You got paintings, you got all kinds of false things. People into Buddha, people into Holly Selassie, all, all this stupid stuff. Got pictures of Holly Selassie with a Jamaican flag. We into idols, man. Right? And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the soul of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. So this is all a curse, man. This is why the most traumatic nations suffering from traumatic psychological psychosis is us. And the life shall and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and thou and shall have none assurance of thy life. Right? So this is why we don't value life. Our enemies taught us not to value life. This is how he can take the chains off you and you kill yourself. You kill those that look like you. You sell them drugs. You oppress them. You rape, rob, and murder in your communities. Because you ain't, you, this is a curse. If your life hang in doubt, because the enemy showed you how he feel about you, and he taught you to feel the same way. So they've been killing us for centuries. And they've been given incentives for those of us that will kill the rest of us. 67. In the morning thou shalt say, would God it were even. And at even thou shalt say, would God it were morning. Right? For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. So we saw so much oppression, so much destruction of our people. Right? Here's the key. We get to the captive part. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now, wait a minute. Egypt walked out of Egypt. Uh, excuse me. Israel walked out of Egypt when the Lord deliver us. But as a curse, I'm going to bring you back again with ships. Now, that never happened literally. But it's talking about Egypt was known for putting the Hebrews in captivity for 400 years. Moses said, you're going back into captivity. But this goes with the 64th verse. That scattering, you're going back into bondage, this time with ships. See, We went into captivity in Babylon. We went into captivity in the Persian Empire. And then the, Greco, the Greeks and the Romans rose up after them. And we were in captivity. And we've been in captivity ever since. So we get the transatlantic slave trade on ships right by the way whereof i spake unto thee thou shalt see it no more again see we want to see our homeland no more and there see the places where the ships would bring the hebrew israelites as a curse ye shall be sold unto your friends ye shall be sold unto your pastor Ye shall be sold unto your brother. What is it saying? Do the Lord lie? Do the Lord, is the Lord confused? No, nah, actually, we be lying and we be confused. Don't you know they got an unwritten rule anytime they go to show you a movie or some sort of, yeah, some sort of production about slavery in the past? They always have to have a white savior. That's part of their thing because it's a psychological thing. They can't have you seeing the whole thing for what it is. So they got to have you getting beat up, raped, robbed, murdered, right? Killed, burnt. And then here come old, you know, Roscoe P. Train. He the one trying to help you, right? He, he going to run the oil on you. He, he try to lead a door open, help you get away. So they always do that. That's what goes on in Hollywood, and that's an unwritten rule. Check it out. Check out any movie you saw that went to show us a bit, a piece of truth of that whole slavery and that transatlantic slave trade and what we endured. They always got to have one of them 
to try to show a nice thing. That's that's the unwritten rule in Hollywood because it per- serves a purpose in, in psychology. So that way you don't leave your house and go upside somebody's head. You say, no, no, they're not all like that, right? And we're not saying they all like that. What we're saying is the ones that mattered with the power, they all like that. <laughs> and anybody else who was complicit, now you can throw them in the list, right? Your regular sheriffs and constables and your regular slave masters and taskmasters, including the white woman, the old mistress, she had her way, you see? So whoever was involved, the Lord record everything. But it's telling you, as a curse, Israel will go into captivity. Egypt, captivity again with ships. And we weren't going to see our homeland no more. And we were to be sold unto our enemies for bond men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. That last part is referring to the law where if a Hebrew Israelite fell on uh, servitude, it was the obligation of a fellow Israelite to buy his freedom. So Moses said, y'all are going to be able to buy the next man's freedom because all you are going into captivity. And that's exactly what happened. So when it says Egypt, spiritually Egypt, you're seeing, you're living in it. <laughs> this modern day Egypt and this modern day Sodom. <laughs> we don't say the best for last. Sodom? Oh, Lord. So let's head to Deuteronomy, right? Since we're in Deuteronomy, let's head to Deuteronomy, I want to say, 23. See if that's the one. That it? Yeah, that's it. So we had Deuteronomy 23 and 17. Deuteronomy 23 and 17. When it says spiritually Sodom, this place is loaded with Sodomites. That's their philosophy. They've been hiding it for, for centuries. Right? But now they've made it from covert to overt. They need you to be foolish and brainwash. So what did the law say? There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. You see that? You see the Lord is plain with that? Very plain, clear English right here. And we already know Christ said we to keep the law. Don't break the law. He came to keep the law. You see Christ walk around, he was a sodomite. Nah. Christ promoted the will of his father. Ain't no group on this earth that claim to be followers of Christ is down with this. Sodomites. And lesbians. And the rest of these new names they come up with. You could change the name, but it's still what it is. <laughs> so let's read it again. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, when you read in the Hebrew somewhat, it'll say Sodomitis, the female version. Nor a Sodomite of the sons of Israel. You see that? Now, what do you mean Sodomite? What was Sodom known for? Let's head to Leviticus 18. Whatever we find out in this information, that's what this society is spiritually about. This is what they stand on. They stand on slavery captivity they tell you freedom and liberty but really these are tricks and wiles to help you take away your natural rights and your natural freedom where you trusting in government they got all the answers oh yeah <laughs> you believe that <laughs> yeah people been dying and they so foolish they won't tell the truth i didn't see Edomites, coughing and hacking. Oh, yeah, I done took the, the, the snake bite in my veins. And uh, I've been sick ever since. Also, oh, did you did the thing give you the disease? Oh, no, no, this, this is normal. It's normal. Wait a second. So you was fine before you took it. Then you put it in your veins, and now you jacked up. 
got myocarditis, which is heart problems, all kinds of problems, lung issues, everything. Did it make you better or worse? And then you more shots and more. <laughs> they lying to the people. And then the people find out. Some people find, man, I should have never took that thing. See, we had in Leviticus 18. Okay, hopefully I gave you the right scripture. But, but Leviticus 18, right? And let's get the right verse. Yeah, so the people under the spell, family members dying, <laughs> all these people dying after they take that snake bite. They got a thing on, uh, you could Google it, called, uh, what do they call it? Um, died suddenly. Just Google it, died suddenly. <laughs> and it is new, it looks from, night, from 2020, especially 21. When that whole snake bite came out, Operation Snake Bite, <laughs> they call warp speed. A lot of people been dying. That depopulation stuff, man. Don't take that stuff, Israel. Okay, natural immunity is above any immunity. Okay. And that thing is not uh that that the the category, I don't want to speak too much on it, but the category of how that's supposed to uh V A C C I N E. And you look up the med because they don't change the medical definition now to fit their sorcery. But you actually look up the original V A C C I N E's, like chicken pox or measles. You ain't never had to go back and get more shots and this. Once they get that was it, because that was that was how they. See, certain things in medicine, they make mistakes. <laughs> and they realize, oh, wait a second. We can't do that. So they manipulate medicine up and down to favor their, uh, how should I say, itinerary. Because they, they, they fully geared into Satan, y'all. So Leviticus 18. Okay. So what you're really dealing with is a P-A-T-H, right? Path. O G E N. That's what you're dealing with. That's not <laughs> that V word. It's a it's a it's a weaponized and it has an electronic component to it that's dealing with the internet. Hey man, they really got it going, man. And it jam people up the minute they press enter on the keyboard. Jacking people up, man. People dropping. Yeah, but check out that documentary if you get a chance, you'll see it. You see it on, um, it might be on some of them other alternative type um, things where you can catch them type of uh, information. Okay, but it's called Died Suddenly. Mm -hmm. So Leviticus 18, and uh, we want to read 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is abomination. So right there it told us, what not to do in the manner of what you should do. You're not to lay, a man is not to lay with another man as if that's a woman. You see that? So he didn't just stop to say man should not lay with man. No, it said you ain't supposed to be laying, a man ain't supposed to be laying with another man as if that's a woman because the Lord created the woman for the man. So you're getting the information right in the law. We don't care how many so-called gender they done made up. The Lord made two gender. And the man and the woman supposed to come together in the sanctity of marriage. So we not to have men with men like as if that's a woman. What did the Lord say? It is abomination. The Lord said this. And if we about the Lord, the true Christ of the, the written word, then we to see it and say it the same way. Now, two chapters over, Leviticus 20, verse 13. Leviticus 20, verse 13. If a man also lie with mankind, as he lieth with a woman. So how come every time it say a man with a man, and then it follow up, now nah, you're supposed to be with a woman. 
your wife. <laughs> so that means you got to pretend somebody's pretending to be the woman. You see, God in his in omnipotence and his, his full knowledge, he know what he created. So he's saying, how is two men getting down like as a man and a woman? That's abomination. How is two women getting down when it's supposed to be a woman with a husband? That's abomination. So if a man also lied with mankind as he lied with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. They shall surely be put to death. So this law was worthy of death. Because you got to understand the, the Hebrew law, the way God set it up, some laws, you know, you can, there was like penalties. In certain cases, financial penalty. Like if a man stole, he had to re repay sevenfold. But then some law, there was no money involved. You could lose your life. Like this one. This law, you break is worthy of death. The Sabbath, you break the Sabbath, is worthy of death. You see? So the Lord had different laws like that. So he said, their blood shall be upon them. So we know vengeance is the Lord. So if Christ said he ain't come to change the law, but to do and fulfill and so forth, <laughs> what's he going to do when he come back? And this is unrepented. See, there's a difference. If it's repented, that's one thing. But if this remains unrepented, you give the Lord no other choice but to handle his business because he's coming to fulfill. And this is why we got a big problem with a lot of these lying ministers and preachers. Now, some of them is sodomites, you see. And that's why they're promoting that. And you find stories, these guys messing with other younger men, and, and these guys, jack, you know, they jacked up. Like, come on, brother. We got to do a better job as a people. You see? So it'd be out of order. Right? And that vibration is in this society. That's why this, these things is happening. And they're happening more at a faster rate because the devil know he have but a short time. Okay? So now when you go to the New Testament, let's see if it changed. Let's go to Second Peter. Second Peter. The second chapter. You got those. Oh, that was the old days. Right? And get, check the source. Where are they getting that information? They parroting the sodomite. The one who's running this earth and, and he's under the spirit and vibration of Sodom. So our people parroting the sodomite. So you need to check the source. Nobody trying to hear what people got to say. We want to hear what the Lord got to say. And the Lord say, as his mercy is great, so is his wrath. So his love and mercy is great. But people forget the other side of the Lord. His wrath. And what we got to repent, people. All right. So Revelation. I'm sorry, Revelation. Second Peter. Right. And we want that second chapter. Second Peter. Two. We're going to read from the 6th verse to the ninth verse. 2 Peter 2 and 6 to 9. And what happened? Peter went into the history. Peter said, And turning the cities of Sodom, that's where the term Sodomites come from. They were infamous of men with men, women with women. Yeah, today they can't say straightforward Sodomites, so they tell you, they trick you. They come up with new fabricated terms for the same sins, and we fall for it. Oh, that guy's not a sodomite. Oh, no. No, no, he, he's uh, one of the alphabets. Right? Full of folly. We have to repent. The Lord give us that space of repentance because he love us. But we're going to take that love and just follow society instead of follow the Lord. You give him no choice. Okay? So it says, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, Israel. What did he do? Promote or condemn? It says, condemn them. Right? Because it was five cities of this region. Condemn them with an overthrow, man. Fiery judgment and brimstone. 
making them an ensemble unto those that after, that's us, should live what? Ungodly. So how are we a Christian? How are we sitting in some religion talking about we godly and we allowing this up in the churches of the Christ? Well, we got to be take a better look. Is this the church of the Christ to begin with? Because any churches of the Christ, the same Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever, man. So the, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, the Lord chose to condemn them, a public display, that this stuff was ungodly. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. See, Lot was a true Christian, a follower of Christ. He was vexed for that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. It's why like we vexed. You go to watch a regular show on the TV and then here come the commercial with that shock and awe. See, that's that's a tactic of the witches, see? Shock and awe to put something, embed something in your subconscious. See, you watching a show or a documentary on like Sea Life or something, right? Next thing you know, here come two guys. And, and the, thing, the, the commercial could be about anything, but they got to show their vibration. They got to show their agenda. The guy's kissing on each other. I done seen one of the worst ones. I'll turn the channel, man. Get this madness out of here. They got a medication for the disease that you're catching from being that lifestyle. And they talk, still keep being you. Be proud. That's the spirit of Sodom and Gomorrah. They were proud. How are you going to be smiling on a commercial? And you got subject to a con condemnation of this type of disease. And you smiling, and you letting people tell you, keep doing what you're doing, you, you ain't going to make it, man. It's the opposite of repentance. You see how the devil do? You ain't got to repent. Just take these two pills right here and keep being who you want to be. And the guy's kissing. And, and not only that, make it bad. It make it worse. They got your face as the face of this agenda. <laughs> they got two brothers kissing. You see how sadistic, you see how satanic the people under the spell can't see how the, 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 how ungodly it is. And they turn it on you how you got some sort of personal thing against this. Not not even a little bit. The mo you your problem is with the most high. <laughs> see all that propaganda, all that, that time running out. Well, that propaganda and the consensus getting people to agree with you, that uh, that ain't stopping the Lord when he come fulfill these prophecies. See, they play them games with a lot of people. They feel the pressure. But I'm going to tell you, there is nothing personal here. Okay, We love the people. We don't love the behavior. We talk in the scriptures. And so that the people would have to take it up with God. Wait a minute. God said this. Say, which they you ain't gonna win that fight, so they got to repent. Say, so the ninth verse, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly. I'm gonna read eight again. For that righteous man dwelling among them and seeing and hearing vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their what unlawful deeds. Where were the laws we found in uh, in Leviticus, <laughs> in Deuteronomy? See, so that show you there's still law in the New Testament. I don't know what these churches teach it. And so the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust, and said it again, verse by verse, what is he saying about this agenda? A verse said ungodly and condemned. Seven verse said filthy conversation of who? Righteous? No, wicked. So they ungodly, they got condemned, they wicked. What is, how do you describe it in the A verse? He said, they unlawful, dealing in unlawful deeds. Then the ninth verse, the Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust, now what he call them? Unjust. Unto the day of judgment to be punished. 
So if you think if you think that was in the past and it ain't gonna happen again, what did the prophet Peter, the apostle Peter, just teach? There's a day of judgment, singular. One day that Christ coming to render judgment to all things, the fulfillment of all things, and these people, they're gonna be punished. And so, what happened? Let's go back to Revelation. Let's close it out. Revelation 11 and 8. Okay. Revelation 11 and 8. He said, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they are the people, right? So it's talking about how Israel is in a dead estate, but this is a pending prophecy. It's an ongoing prophecy. Okay, it's not completely fulfilled, but it's it's in motion. And you're in the midst of it. It's been going on ever since Alexander and the Greeks came into power, all the way to the Roman centuries later, and then all the way till now under Britain and America. Okay. And that's what you live it in. A sodomite witchcraft. Lion society, full of ungodliness, wickedness, unjust, right? There's no justice for the people. Ninth verse. And they are the people, and kindreds and tongues, and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. That's just getting to a certain unnamed, uh, unmarked time. Only the Lord knows the time frame. But that's letting them know a temporary time where they see in the children of Israel in a dead estate and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. So that's telling you they weren't literally put in graves, else they would have put them in the graves. What it's talking about is they're not trying to revive us. They're not trying to help us to live. they rejoicing that our people are in a dead estate. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them. This is why all the other dark nations... Black and brown, they link up with the so-called European, and they don't represent you in the United Nations building. They rejoice that you are on the bottom. And make merry and shall send gifts one to another, because so they done blocked us out of the world economy. They, they done blocked us. And they deal with one another. Why? Because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. So the two prophets symbolically representing the two factions of Israel. And you'll read that this prophecy, what the Lord showed John in this John in Revelation 11 and 8, it was originally shown to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 37 speaks of a similar prophecy of Israel in the graves. And they were split because after Solomon's death, they split into two factions, the kingdom of Judah to the south and the kingdom of Israel to the north. When we was one nation, man, David and Solomon, man, we was on top. None of these nations could deal with us. So they said they all in a consensus, don't ever let them Israelites come back to power. And that's what you're dealing with today. All these nations in cahoots with the so-called European to make sure we on the bottom. I'll say this briefly, then I move forward. I was doing some research, and I got into following the breadcrumb and the trails. You'll follow that trail, and I started checking out certain government agencies that was in bed with the Vatican and with the Italian mafia, right, to make sure the drugs hit our communities. And they would do test runs. They would do all that. And you find out that so many names and so many groups and organizations besides the so-called European was in on our downfall. And they did a test run on the, of the heroin way back in the late 40s. They said, put it in the jazz clubs up in New York. Right? And you'll see a lot of those jazz musicians Right, they were the first ones dealing with the heroin, and they said this thing works. Okay, now flood the rest of the community. It was so bad, even Billie Holiday, jazz singer, she got hooked on the heroin. 
So this was this was where you see a bunch of countries was in on this. Okay. Um and if you want, I don't know if the, the there's a document there's not a document, there's an interview. Uh I'll probably post it in the link on the Facebook. There's an interview with the guy who actually wrote the book and the information. Uh Paul L. Williams. And he name wrote the book Operation Gladio. And he tells he talks about this long history of how they was jacking us up and these nations joined together to keep us down. And along with besides the so called European, you had Turkey, you had certain African nations, you had a whole bunch of nations helping the so called European to make sure them drugs got to our communities. It's outrageous, Israel. Okay, so that's the prophecies being fulfilled and still pending. Ten verse. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. So that spirit of life, that's the outpouring of the Holy Spirit through Christ the Comforter. So this prophecy tells of Israel being revived. It take the Christ to do so. And they stood upon their feet. And great fear fell upon them with sword. And why are the nations scared? Who are you scared for if you if we brothers? Right? Freedom and justice and liberty for all. Now you're scared of guilty conscience. All these nations fear the day of the revival of Israel. But this thing is pending. And you got the elect waking up in every generation until the Christ come. We getting the earth back, brother. It's going to be a galactic takeover. And they heard a great voice. See, the elect of Israel, we heard the voices of the Christ. Right? From heaven saying unto them, come up hither. We're going to ascend. As Christ ascend, we're going to ascend. And they ascended up to the heaven in a cloud. Right? This is to remove us out the way. To remove his elect out the way while he come to bring that fire. And their enemies beheld them. So what does that tell you? They with us in this in this uh, salvation? No, there's a distinction made. They're not going to be glory in the kingdom with us. I don't know what this Christianity done told us, but the, <laughs> God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. You can't rape, rob, and murder the earth, call it colonization, and call it Christianizing nations. And giving people Christian names, uprooting them and every other thing, and think you ain't going to get the comeback. You see, the Lord got that comeback. Like my man James Brown, he, he said, um, revenge. <laughs> right? The big payback. <laughs> that's right. The Lord got that payback. God is not mocked. For you. That's mocking God to think that one person can get away with sin, let alone a whole nation. Talking about, oh, that was in the past. We ain't had nothing to do with your, the plight of your people. Yeah, really. That's why the other brothers put a song, an album together, said it takes a nation of millions to hold us back. In other words, this was a joint effort where they passed the information down to their generations so that their generations can be complicit in blocking you out of society on all levels. From the criminal justice system and keeping you in captivity with a fake 13th Amendment that still allows you to be slaves. So they perpetrate crimes on you and that's how they can keep slavery going. Because if you do crimes, all of a sudden you belong to the state. <laughs> it's tricks. So that means just keep perpetrating crimes on you. You see? It's out of order. Even in the drug game, they, they made distinction. You get caught with crack cocaine back in the 90s, oh, you get life. Heavy football <laughs> type sentences, man. But the so-called European, he can get caught with pounds of powdered cocaine. He getting probation. Then after they did that, they came back later on. Bill Clinton, oh, we want to apologize. Apologize? How many families you done destroyed? How many, how many families you done destroyed? 
bringing the drugs in and then arresting the only people who saw the, 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 the jail cells was the people at the bottom of the operation, the very people that was being inflicted by the injury. Right? But the people at the top, they never saw a courtroom. And they made these heavy fines and penalties. This criminal justice system. We can get to real estate with the redlining and all the other tricks where they blocked us out of certain parts of, the, of, of America. See? So we don't want to hear nothing. <laughs> we want to see, hear this. <laughs> all praises. So the revival of the Israelites is anytime soon, y'all. Christ is on his way. Maybe tonight, maybe the next half hour, who knows? But if he don't come in our lifetime, that ain't stopping this prophecy. This thing is in motion. Ain't no one can stop it. So with that said, Israel, I mean, there was more to this. I didn't get to read Ezekiel 37, but we understand we in a witchcraft sodomite-type, corrupt, ungodly society by design. The prophecy already called it. So we're not to be surprised when the next year they're pushing pedophilia. Next year they're going to be out with pushing that bestiality. they out of order, man. They're already doing the bestiality up in New York. You can go on the Broadway show and go watch that filth. You see? So to, for, for Christian folk to not see who this, this, this final kingdom is that's full of the devil, that means you part of it. you complicit with it. For you to not see it and, have, and, see it and make a distinction, you see. So we got to repent, Israel. There's no such thing as a European Christ. That's part of your problem. <laughs> that means anything he do is Christ-like. The man do all manner of evil and our people still defend him. So we don't want to hear nothing. We want to hear the word of God. And we want to see the day of our salvation with Christ, a man of color, dark skin with woolly hair, come back with that thunder and lightning, that fire, man, that the hottest heat ever in the history of mankind, and bring it on the wicked while we don't move on out the way of sin. All praises. And if Christ don't come in our lifetime, that way he call it the resurrection unto eternal life. That he that believeth on him, though he were dead, yet shall he live. He's going to take away our sorrows and take away our tears, man. It was well worth it. We made it. And we're getting out of here, y'all. Just don't compromise and don't, don't sleep. And don't backslide. We got to stay strong and stay humble. We got to pass the information to our children. We ain't out here to expose truth. No, no, we here to pass the information. And for those that have ears to hear, let them hear. Those not, they don't want to keep, them, keep doing what you're doing. See if you'll win. Because the Lord ain't lost a, a fight yet. All right, so let's end with the prayer. All praises. All right. So, Heavenly Father, in the name of Christ, let your peace and love be in our hearts. Thank you for your holy word. Grant unto us your Holy Spirit that we may receive the words to do them and perform them all the days of our life. Let your healings be upon us that we may be healed mentally, physically, spiritually, and protect us. Let your holy angels protect and put a hedge about us. For thou hast said that for those that fear you, you have put the angels which encamp around those that fear you. And we trust in that. All praises to the most high in the name of Christ. Thank you. Amen. All right, Israel. So go with God. My name's Brother Aram. Peace and blessings to you and yours. Shalom.